Hey, Daniel, it's uh, it's great to connect. Likewise, Scott. Good to talk to you. This is uh, this is pretty cool. So we've we've actually been working together uh, for for years in a partnership, uh, but you and I have have never yet met. Um, we've gotten to work with a bunch of great members of of the Lemonade team. But, right uh, it's back at you. It's to, been yeah. to be connected. Too long in coming. So I think we're supposed to have a little bit of a chat, and and maybe people listening can learn a little bit about uh, your amazing company and some of the innovative things you're doing. Uh, maybe I could talk a little bit about Charity Water and and then some of the impact that that we've had together uh, and some of the lives we've been able to transform. I so don't why don't you start? Lemonade. I, listen, I'm, I, uh, full disclaimer, I just before this call signed up and got pet insurance. Well, thank so you. So I am now a customer. This. Excellent. And what do you choose? and 52 cents a month. <laughs> what do you choose for your give back cause? Uh, I didn't see that in there. Does that come in the in the comms afterwards? No. Maybe, maybe not for pet insurance in the flow? No, no, it should have been there. You, that's the, the most important part of the whole sign up. Scott, yeah, well, let's get... let's let's talk about that. <laughs> that that might have been me going too fast and, and maybe the default cause gets it. Maybe we're even the default for the month. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that we asked ourselves, Shai and I, my co-founder, when we started Lemonade, is why do people hate insurance? Why is it that people are willing to people who are otherwise law-abiding citizens and self-conceive as good people, why is it that when it comes to insurance, they, they let the devil out? They're quite happy to lie. They're quite happy to talk about it openly at uh, you know, dinner table conversations, which they wouldn't do in other aspects of their lives. And it was such an anomaly because if you think about insurance at a mathematical level, at a fundamental level, it is almost the definition of a social good. It's a community of people mm -hmm pooling resources to help their weakest in the hour of need. That is almost the definition of a social good. And yet the perception of insurance couldn't be further removed from that if, if you tried. And in thinking that through, we reached the conclusion pretty early on that insurance was perceived as having a conflict of interest. So if I'm an insurance company, you make a claim. If I pay the claim, you're $1,000 or whatever you claimed richer and I'm poorer by the same amount. So we're fighting mm -hmm. over the same coin. And that enables people to think about this as a conflicted relationship and as one where there's an imbalance of power and they have to Seriously. right this wrong and therefore they're going to mm -hmm. cheat and do whatever they have to do. And then as the insurance company get to treat you as the criminal that you are, and this thing spirals onwards and downwards. And in the early stages of Lemonade, we're thinking about how can we change the whole nature of the game? And for us, the give back and the charity component was about solving a business problem. The business problem was how do I signal to my customer, how do I actually solve a conflict of interest? And then how do I signal that to my customers to change my behavior and theirs? Mm -hmm. So the idea that we're gonna take a flat fee and if there's money left over at the end of the year, it's gonna to go to a charity, you choose the charity, changes my incentives because I gain nothing by denying your claim. So I might as well suddenly flip that and pay it as quickly as I can so that I get the NPS, the satisfied customers and the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And you might think twice before defrauding your insurance company if instead of sticking it to the nameless, faceless behemoth, you're hurting charity water causes that you care about. Yeah. So that was really the initial thought process, and it's really played out over the course of the last few years. That's fantastic. And was anybody doing anything even close to this? No, I don't think so. Not in insurance in any event. Um, you know, new business structures like public benefit corporations and B Corp were still coming online. So there are elements of that in other industries, but not in insurance that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, I mean, Daniel, I love that. I mean, that's so similar to maybe the, the founding story of Charity Water. So when I started, I was 30, uh, looking at the charitable sector and talking to my friends who worked at MTV or Sephora or you know the bank. And I learned so many of them didn't trust charities. 42% uh, of Americans actually polled by USA Today said they don't trust charities. And, and this shocks people, but uh, New York University did a more recent study that found 70% of respondents believe charities wasted their money. Right? It's like you, you have one job as a charity to be a good steward and to create impact with those donations. So, you know, I would hear horror stories of scandal and nepotism and, you know, some sort of tsunami or earthquake where a billion dollars was mismanaged. I mean, everybody had that that reason for not giving. I mean, there was a time when uh, Anderson Cooper here used to 
uh, you know, chase down the bad charity on the steps of their McMansion and the door would slam and Anderson Cooper standing there with his mic and, you know, people throw up their hands and say, that's why I don't give a bunch of crooks. So, you know, to solve, to solve the problem. And it's, it's interesting just hearing how similar they were both going after a lack of trust, a lack of transparency. So I just said, what if we could promise the public uh, that a hundred percent of every donation they would ever give would go directly uh, in our case to clean water projects. Uh, and that in a separate bank account, a separately audited, separately numbered bank account, we would raise all of the overhead for the staff salaries, the flights, the office costs, the toner for the Epson copy machine uh, from a very small group of donors who knew exactly what they were paying for. They would opt in to paying those uh, maybe unsexy overhead costs. And, you know, I remember going down to the local bank. Uh, I think we had a few hundred dollars to open up both accounts and said, church and state, they'll never touch each other. And then that led to this kind of second revelation that, wow, money is no longer fungible. So I can take $6 from, you know, Daniel's daughter uh, from her allowance, and I could actually track that $6, all $6, to a water project in Ethiopia or in Nepal or in Southeast Asia, you know, in Cambodia. Um, so, you know, this, this first kind of pillar became transparency and uh, the 100% model. And then the second was just using technology to track those donations to show people where they went. So, you know, we, we were the first charity to geolocate every water project on Google Earth and Google Maps. Uh, just believing that people would tell their friends if they could see a picture of their well. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether you have kids, so, so sorry if you don't have a daughter, but we, we have so many kids around the the, the world that, you know, that, that contribute to charity water. And that's one of the reasons because they know that that small yeah. amount of money actually matters. Yeah. So I have three boys. Oh, three boys. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. It's one of the things that's pretty amazing when we look at the impact and we're able to convey to our own customers, the impact that they have had by designating charity water. Um, so we've been doing this for a few years together and, yep. you know, you look at, We've got, I'm just reading here from my list about in Malawi and Ethiopia and Cambodia, a different causes that we've been able to support and able to then convey that back to our customers and let them know exactly what's happened. And we get amazing um, on social media and elsewhere, just amazing yeah. feedback. People really that love feedback that. feedback loop. It's so yeah. important, right? Because I think a lot of people think that they give or, or maybe even in your case, right? Oh, okay. Did, did Lemonade actually give that extra money to the charity and did it, did it? you know, did it cause any good effect in the world? So when you're able to, to share that good news, um, it, it creates this really virtuous cycle. And I think people give more. Uh, they are, no the, the disenchanted become enchanted. Uh, the cynical become believers. And, it really and is you know, it that's, that's allowed us now to, to raise over half a billion dollars. Um, no government money, you know, not foundations typically. It's just everyday people who know where, $50 or $100 or $10,000 could sponsor yeah. an entire community and, and great partnerships like, uh, like the ones with, with yours. So yeah, you've, you've impacted uh, you know, over almost 2,000 people's lives across a bunch of countries. And uh, one of the cool things is some of the, the money that we were able to take uh, from, from your customers, we actually have rehabilitated water projects at schools. And you know, a lot of people don't know this, but every one in three schools in the world doesn't have clean water. You know, so imagine sending your three boys uh, to school with no water. Uh, they also don't have toilets. Imagine sending a teenage girl to a school with no sanitation and hygiene facilities. And this is one of the top reasons why, why girls drop out around the world. And um, when you're able to bring clean water and, and toilets to a school, it, it transforms education. So that's kind of the, you know, one of the amazing benefits too that, that you've helped fund that goes beyond just the water project, but is actually... You know, helping people lead their communities and their countries forward uh, by spending more time at school, by learning. And it's so interesting to hear you talk about um, your Anderson Cooper thing. It's funny because I've got a video of Anderson Cooper exposing all different stuff that's happening in insurance companies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but I guess the common denominator beyond the, the trust is... And we both have gray hair. Like Anderson. <laughs> yeah, my Anderson Cooper glasses. <laughs> Um, the idea of, of bringing some of the disciplines out of the tech world in terms of 
transparencies, things that, and using technology to track things um, has pervaded both of our endeavors. And it's really something that you yeah. see people feeling just, just being transparent in and of itself and giving an account of what's happening is something that instills trust. People can handle the truth. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's true. And you did something yeah, similar when you, when you did these two bank accounts, you're, you're signaling to your customers something structural about the way you conduct yourselves, which differs from the traditional way of doing things. And we were th very thoughtful at the beginning as well, using kind of game theory and other kind of models about how do we convey, how do we instill in ourselves the, the disciplines to ensure that trust is for real? And then how do you convey it to other people as well? Yeah. And one of the things I loved, you know, having just gone through the process is, you know, and, and if people haven't gone through the lemonade process, it's, it's so great uh, because you just talk to people like a person would talk, right? Maybe not like a machine. So uh, it's, it's witty. It's a little funny. Uh, it's a little coy uh, sometimes as you take people through the process, asking questions, um, which I think is you know, it's the most human, I mean, it's, it's fantastic UI UX. Uh, it's, it's really great. Uh, it's a really great customer journey. And, you know, we, we think of that as well as when we take a donation, how do we thank the customer or, or the, in our case, the, the donor or supporter, but then what does that lifelong journey look like? Well, we can tell them the impact of their donation, where we can share stories or videos from the, the field, from the countries around the world, you know, during, during COVID, um, we, we hosted, I think it was 40 virtual events where tens of thousands of charity water donors would just turn up on Zoom and we would kind of report to them as shareholders mm -hmm. uh, and then let them ask questions. And, you know, I probably did 15 or 20 of those events. We had our water programs team and, and specialists and engineers host a bunch of events. We had, you know, all, all different uh, team members throughout the organization. But what, one of my favorite events was talking to people who were only giving $5 a month. So the, the lowest kind of value, right? Dollar value customers and trying to treat them like millionaires. You know, I went into that Zoom call saying, you know, okay, they're going to give $60 a year. This is meaningful to them. It's going to get, you know, one person access to clean water. Um, how, do, how do we really make them feel seen and appreciated and, and needed? You know, we, we do need that $5 a month because it moves the mission forward. So that was one of the, you know, kind of the, the blessings, uh, I guess, in disguise of, of this, you know, COVID Zoom, Zoom until your eyes bleed world. <laughs> and it's interesting because $5 a month is the entry level policy at Lemonade. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's well, we're also, you know, one of the similarity, we're, we're both in the subscription business. Um, I yeah. waited 10 years too long to get in that. Uh, you, you, you started early, but, you know, for, for 10 years of Charity Water's the, the first decade, it was really people giving once, um, you know, maybe even working with a company like yours once, right? You have a great year, uh, you and I meet and you're like, listen, here's 50 grand. We had a great year. Let's build a few wells. The next year you go find another cause and I've got to go, you know, find the next Daniel, the next lemonade, uh, and then really additive to, to grow to that. So at, at uh, a few years ago, we, we um, had the, 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 the fortune of taking Daniel Eck from Spotify to Ethiopia with me to actually see some of the wells that he funded. And, you know, we were sitting in the back of a Land Rover and he's, he was feeling sorry for me because I had to start at zero every January one. And no matter how much money I'd raised in the previous 12 months, the ticker rolled back to zero and we'd look at ourselves and say, we couldn't work any harder. You know, I, I think I did 98 flights that year. I, I can't get on any more planes. I can't make any more speeches. I can't do any more events. And, you know, he really encouraged me to, to adopt the, the, the subscription model, the Spotify, Netflix, yep. uh, Hulu, you know, Lemonade model and build a community. So we, uh, we launched something called The Spring and just said, hey, look, um, give what you can. Uh, but it's really the, the consistency that will really help us this idea of building a community and you know we kind of anchored around forty dollars a month which is what it costs to help one human get clean water but we have lots of people giving five dollars a month and we have some people giving four hundred dollars a month uh, because because they can and that is now really transformed charity water you know leading to forty percent growth and forty percent growth and thirty percent growth um, and you know now we've got uh, our subscribers or our spring members across 147 different countries 
Um, and, and they give about $30 a month on average. Extraordinary. That's really amazing. There's a lot of people that can do that. So, you know, I'm, I'm in with you now for, I think, $23 and 52 cents for, uh, for my puppy. <laughs> and it's, it's great. Now, now you can have a relationship with me as a customer that hopefully lasts decades. And, you know, maybe it's, it's life insurance for my kids yeah. one day or for my wife or, uh, or, or, you know, all the different products I'm sure you have in the pipeline that you're excited about. Yeah, that's amazing. Actually, we launched life insurance, so have at it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Um, oh, it's extraordinary what you built. And we just feel so privileged to be part of it. I, I wonder, um, you know, one of the things that we've tried to be thoughtful about at Lemonade is this balance of for profit and, and not for profit. Yeah. Um, and the, these kind of legal entities like public benefit corporations that are for profit, but not just for profit. And I wonder whether you have any thoughts about the future of solving world problems. Do you think they're all they're going to continue as you are structured today in a donor kind of construct? Or do you think there's other hybrid models that make sense? Well, I think you're you're showing a model that is adding real value, right? You've given away millions of dollars. And as you grow in scale, that impact, because it's built into the business model, uh, grows and scales. Um, I, I, I think I'm a bit of a mixed mind. Uh, you know, I, 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 I probably get an email a week saying that charity water should be in the bottled water business and that that's how we would solve the water crisis. And, you know, I've seen the numbers. We, we've all seen those, those bottles. I'm not going to mention any brand names, but uh, if you look at the fine print, it's typically one penny or two pennies. The most I've ever seen was five pennies on a $3 bottle of water. Yeah. Right. So you do the math there, you know, one three hundredth or two three hundred. And, you know, we uh, I, I've, I've looked at kind of the amount of money we've been able to raise philanthropically, yeah. uh, which is now, you know, well over half a billion dollars. And the amount of money that these pennies add up to, which are typically in the, the low millions or, or, you know, maybe 10, 15 million over that same time period. So I think it really depends on maybe how generous the give is. Uh, and, and that's what I love about Lemonade. You know, it's a significant give. It's not a penny on $3. Uh, it's not just to market. It's actually to, to actually funnel uh, money uh, and, and use it for good. So as you're 10 times bigger, you know, your give is in the tens of millions. And as you're a hundred times bigger, you know, you might be one of the most powerful uh, directors of philanthropic capital through millions and millions of users, uh, to you know, to a bunch of great causes. So I'm, I'm, I think there's room for both. What I'm typically cynical and skeptical about is the people that say, "Ah, we need to attach some cause, you know, to tick that box. Let's figure out the very least that we can give, just so people aren't calling us out about it." And you know, you'll look at. <laughs> um, so uh, what I love, you know, there's there's one really inspiring. Um, story at uh, a company that we've worked with, Caterpillar, you know, the big machinery, oh. their founder many years ago, and, and I don't know the, the exact date, but I think it was probably a hundred or so years ago, put 1% of profits into the bylaws. And today, 1% of profits go into a foundation. That foundation has done, uh, I think they've done well over a billion dollars now. Of philanthropic capital. So that, you know, because he built it in and he was clear, and I'm sure in the early days when he was building the company, that was peanuts. Probably yeah. didn't feel like they were making an impact. But, you know, at scale now, um, they just have to do it. I'm sure there's investors that don't like it. There's probably shareholders that don't like it, but that is part of the DNA of the company and, and gets to fund uh, a lot of really great work around the world. So um, I think you'll, you'll be one of, those, uh, one of those groups, one of those companies. That's really interesting. I didn't know the, the Caterpillar um, example. And we actually, before our IPO, we gave 1% of our equity to, our, um, we established a nonprofit, we called it the Lemonade Foundation, and we gave 1% of our equity there. And we did it before our IPO so that our investors, our new investors would have nothing to complain about because it was done before they came on board. They weren't diluted sure. by it. Yep. It was the early investors and founders that, that took that dilution. And then separately, we've got our give back and I'm just hoping that we find a way without the cynical kind of one penny on a $3 thing. I'll, I'll give you my, my thesis and you tell me if yes, it works please. for you at all. 
So I think of what we're doing, which is, I think of it as pretty modest, frankly, but as enlightened self-interest. You know, we had a problem, a business problem, which is conflicted relationships between the insured and the insurer. And we found that partnerships with nonprofits could go a long way towards neutralizing that because we're changing a two-party game, a, a confront, conflicted relationship of two parties to a three-party relationship. We've got charity water in the room with us. Yep. And now a customer thinks twice before embellishing a claim. We think twice before denying the claim. So actually solving a business problem by adding a charitable dimension to our business. And what I just am hopeful is that the world is becoming a world of greater and greater abundance. And of course, you're dealing in places of um, great shortage, but you think about the, the Western world and people are yeah. climbing higher and higher up the Maslow scale. And I, I like to think that that bends the arc of history to a place where consumers want to affiliate with brands that they think are doing good. And and that is a but, and you see that younger consumers are much more sensitive to this than previous generations were, and I wonder whether that just militates in favor of businesses like Caterpillar, what they did, or like Lemonade, where rather than feeling like you have to apologize to your investors for doing something at their expense, you can boast to your investors that you're doing something that is accretive to shareholder value, yes, because consumers want to affiliate with those kind of brands more, yes, yes. I, I absolutely think um, more and more, you know, especially younger customers, they deeply care about this stuff um, and they care about it being more than lip service. So yeah. they will, they will see through yeah. uh, if there's not integrity there, if, if this is, you know, if this is just to tick the box and it's just to say, Hey, just go away. Here's our CSR thing or our <laughs> ESG thing. They, they see through that, but I think they can fall in love with companies where this is deeply integrated, where there's uh, a, an integrity in, in the giving. Um, so yeah, I, I think you'll, th- this will help you continue to, to win and create a connection and a relationship and, and build trust uh, with, you know, with, with the Lemonade customer, which is what we're trying to do as well, is, is build trust with these, these members now you know, who've chosen, I mean, they could give to anything. Uh, they could give to clean water. They, they don't need to give to clean water. And in fact, most of the people joining Charity Water, they've actually never experienced the problem. Yeah. Uh, right? I mean, they've never had to walk eight hours with 40 pounds of dirty water on their back, knowing that they could kill their child that night with that river water. Uh, they, they've never gone to a school with no water and toilets. Um, they, they've never been attacked by an animal, you know, uh, at the water hole, you know, fighting or competing with a, you know, a hyena or some of the crazy stuff that we, that we hear. So we, uh, we don't take them for granted. We try to say that a lot. And then we try to treat people um, with a lot of gratitude and, and respect. And, and again, think of this as a really long game. I mean, we've, look, there's 785 million people without access to clean water. We've helped 13 million. So that's not enough. That's like one sixty-fifth of the problem. Uh, and, and maybe you, th- you, you have your own version of that as well, of you know, the share that you have of uh, sure. you know, all the people that are, that are insured out there. So I think that excites us. You know, I believe the best is, is yet to come. And in our case, we get to take 15 years of experience and learnings and uh, certainly some, <laughs> some mistakes we've made. And and turn that into uh, hopefully the momentum to, to knock out more of this problem, make sure yeah. more and more people have clean water. I mean, it is one of the great things about the issue is it's an inarguable good. Yeah. Right. Whether you're a, you know, a conservative or a liberal or whether you're a religious person or religion is anathema to you, you know, everybody can stand for clean water for humans. Uh, for, for men, women, and children. So it's allowed us to kind of build a really big tent and then just invite people from a very diverse backgrounds to come and participate. Well, you know, ahead of the, the World Water Day, <laughs> um, yes. just want to say what a privilege we feel it is to be partnered with you, with you, Scott, and with Charity Water. And on behalf of a million plus customers, many of whom have designated um, charity water as their give back cause. Thank you for the incredible work that you de- you do every single day and around the world. 
and thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. We feel really grateful. It's been a real uh, blessing and an honor to, to partner with you. So I'm excited to see the, the impacts we can create uh, going forward into the future. Um, you know, if people wanted to learn more, uh, I think we actually have a link uh, for World Water Day, just charitywater.org slash lemonade, charitywater.org slash lemonade. Um, and if somebody is interested in watching some of the videos or, or diving a little deeper or, or even joining the spring, maybe there's people you know, watching that could give five or 10 or even $40 a month um, in, in addition to uh, their, their policies, uh, we'd, we'd love to invite them to learn more and to, to participate. Amazing. So charitywater.org slash lemonade. Charitywater.org slash lemonade. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for your time.